Thank you very much for nice introduction. Uh, today I'd like to talk on uh, this domain wall dynamics in chiral antifermanence from the viewpoint of magnetic optical. Recently we have been studying this chiral antifermanence, which can be characterized by using octopole structure, which has a kind of time-broken symmetry. That's why then we can regard this magnetic octopole like macroscopy. But before going to UC further, then I'd like to just say, <clears throat> so this, uh, I'd like to just introduce my collaborators. Today, I'd like to just talk on uh, two topics, magnetic spin hole effect and also antiferromagnetic domain wall dynamics. So first one is a uh, kind of collaboration among my group, uh, Nick and Sam's, and also the Professor Nakasuji group in ISSP, now the Department of Physics University of Tokyo, and also Professor Alan McDonald's group in University of Texas Austin. In his group at that time, postdoc and Dr. Chen had a very important role in theoretical analysis, and he is now in Colorado State University. And the second topic, this is also collaborative work, and then there are two papers already published in terms of magnetic spin hole effect and also the antiferromagnetic domain world dynamics in communication physics recently. And these are funding bodies. So I like to, this is outline of my talk, uh, which is, uh, four, consists of four parts. I like to just start the introduction. We have been working on spin conversion, which is a versatile functionality in which all the physical entities, heat, vibration, sound, light, and electricity can be interconverted by spins. We know that spin hole effect, which converts charge to spin, it's the most important uh, behavior with which we can generate the spin current. This is known as a spin orbit torque. This spin current can manipulate, for example, excite spin waves and also switch magnetization back and forth. We can drive the main wall. And also more recently, we can manipulate skips, uh, this topology, such as scamions. So that is uh, uh, what I'd like to say. And as until recently, the bulk spin hole effect of typically 4D or 5D transition metals has been used to analyze this type of behavior. So um, uh, then, the, for example, this important uh, spin hole angle, which is a efficiency, which is varying up to something one to up to 30%. So then the one is always seeking the better efficiency. And then trend is shifting towards this interfaces and the surfaces. So this is at the proton insulator and also Rashba interface. All these studies and created lots of achievements and we now know metal metal or metal oxide and also oxide oxide interfaces play an important role to generate a spin current. And also topological insulator surface state also works very well. In addition to that, and we are now seeking new functionality so then we just focus on this chiral non-collinear antiferromagnet. In our case, and it's a magnet 3 team, which is classified into wire cell metals. So now I'd like to just simply um, compare the antiferromagnet with ferromagnet. Even in co collinear antiferromagnet, we can say the stray field is nearly zero. So this is a very good news for miniaturization. Uh, secondly, resonance frequency in the case of ferromagnet, typically gigahertz, but in the case of antiferromagnet, exchange field and also anisotropy fields becomes very important inside the crystal so that you know, we can get subtelehealth operation is um, probably possible with using antiferromagnet. And also variation of materials, and we can have semiconductors, insulators, and also metallic behaviors with using this uh, oxide or with anti antiferromagnet. But the bad news is there is no direct coupling with magnetic field, so that's why then it becomes very difficult to control the magnetic state. That is a consequence of antiferromagnet. So, so far, um, there has been a demonstration uh, which shows a very good, a strong point of antiferromagnet. For example, firstly, we can get spin polarized current from antiferromagnet, so that this theoretical proposal uh, shows non-collinear antiferromagnet, you can make a kind of GML type of junction. 
so that you can create, inject the spin polarized current through the one side to the other. More recently, even in the case of non-collinear antiferromagnet, we can have a similar type of junction through which we can expect the spin polarization dependent magneto resistance like GMR. Secondly, on this kind of material, a couple of manganese arsenide or manganese to gold, and which has local uh, spatial symmetry broken so that we can expect Edelstein spin orbit torque. Just passing the current, and we can flip the a moment of magnet, uh, manganese so that in a controlled manner, you can see in this paper, they succeeded in controlling switching uh, periodically for in very control, controllable switching can be realized. Thirdly, uh, spin on call effect is also utilized uh, to switch the magnetic state inside uh, nickel oxide, which was demonstrated with Moriyama and our collaborators and published in scientific records. So now I'd like to show you this magnesium routine, how good it is compared with ferromagnet and also other collinear antiferromagnets. As we know, in the case of ferromagnet, we have a large magnetization, which is a large response. So that we can expect large response in other quantities, for example, spin polarization, magnet optics, and also some electric properties, such as anomalous Nernst defect. But in the case of normal uh, collinear antiferromagnet, we can have the very small magnetization fully compensated uh, small response. That's a consequence. That's why then we don't have so much response here. But this our novel antiferromagnet, manganese 3 tin, which shows vanishingly small magnetization when we apply magnetic field, but response is gigantic. You know, in 2015, it was reported that we can observe large anomalous hole effect in this material. We, we now know this is coming from the, uh, the presence of wire points and of which create a large berry phase. That is what we know. And also this shows the spin polarization and also magneto optics. We can see this kind of domain structure in this material. And also anomalous analysis effect. So that's when you know, we can make this kind of sum piles. Okay, so then the, the important message, large responses become available, which has never been seen in antiferromagnets. I would like to also mention that some already there is a family material such as manganese with germanium, which also shows a very big response in anomalous hole effect, which has been reported by the Professor Felsa and also Professor Parkins group in already in 2016. And also following the year 2017, the theoretical group shows the theoretical analysis on the magnesium 3X, which includes garium, germanium, tin, rhodium, iridium, and platinum, and the variety of sample, which shows very particular feature you can expect the spin polarization along the current, but they call spin current angle, which is high value. And also the ordinary spin hole angle is also large enough and in these materials. So now that I'd like to just talk a little bit quickly magnetic spin hole effect from which we found in this material. So then, as I said, uh, there is large electric response such as anomalous hall effect. Normally, anomalous hall effect shares its mechanism with spin hole effect. That's why then we can expect spin hole effect in this material. Then, then we use an FIB, cut the slab out of single crystal. Then you pass the current in this direction so that then you can expect, if there is anomalous hall effect, kind of spin accumulation along this surface. So standard method, is a pair of electrodes, one side of ferromagnet, the other side is non-magnetic kappa. So if it is aligned perfectly perpendicular to the current direction, so that then we can expect um, chemical potential can be detected by ferromagnet. So principle what we did is, as I mentioned, the manganese routine, if there is a surface spin accumulation, we have 
neural net is omically connected and which is sensitive to the chemical potential because the chemical potential is connected to the chemical potential at the first surface. And then we measure the voltage potential between this ferromagnet and the neuromagnet kappa. And if we switch the magnetization direction back and forth, we can expect this kind of hysteretic behavior, which is exactly the proof that we have spin accumulation on the surface. As we expected, we see, we set the firstly the spin structure in one particular direction, and we just scanned the magnetization um, back and forth, and which showed clearly this kind of hysteretic behavior. We are very happy under this overall change, delta R, which corresponds to the presence of spin accumulation on the surface, which has in-plane component. When we, that's surprisingly, when we switch this spin direction, and then when we measured the uh, chemical potential, and this hysteretic behavior changed the complete sign completely. This is surprising for us because spin current itself, if we apply the time reversal operation and you don't see any sign change, but in this case, sign change takes place in the spin hole effect. Okay, and then we decided to measure more carefree angular dependence and then plot it the odd component by obtaining this value that are an odd component from this total change, the, the difference divided by two. And then when we plot it as a function of angle, and then we, we saw this type of uh, sinusoidal variation. We wanted to know, and then we started to collaborate with Professor Alan McDonald's group and then Dr. Fu Chen, uh, he calculated the spin density of the spin density which appeared on the surface of this manganese three tin. So then apply, they employ the quantum kinetic theory and we're using this toy model which correspond to our case and then rotated the external magnetic field to measure the spin density as a function of angle, particularly in-plane component. And then we see exactly the same type of variation in this, in which well experienced, it explains our experiments. I'd like to just show you that they are uh, calculated results, and this is, uh, this shows in-plane component Sx and Sy, as well as this uh, Z component. This is surprising that we saw this, uh, there is an outer plane component on the spin density. So, and also the other interesting thing is if we rotate the spin structure in this way, and this um, spin accumulation component also changes in this way. Actually, the results shows that this um, spin density vector, which rotate with rotation of external magnetic field within this light blue circle. So that is a kind of characteristic behavior of this magnetic spin hole effect. We also then did in an opposite direction. That means that we inject the spin current into this material, then a studied response. We know that then if we inject the spin current into the platinum by using a spin popping method, at the resonance field, either negative or positive, we get the response in a positive or negative. This kind of sign change response because then you change the spin polarization of the spin current. So this means that a spin hole angle, which is efficiency um, given by the spin current divided by charge current is always positive in the case of platinum. But in this material, again, surprisingly, either negative field or positive field, always you know, we get the positive um, response at the resonance field. This exactly means that the spin hole angle changes its sign. So I summarize here. Okay, and then uh, this kind of out of plane component in application wise, it's a very beneficial. If you try to use an ordinary spin hole effect, 
is perpendicular anisotropy moment, which has a perpendicular anisotropy, always is perpendicular, and which stays exactly perpendicular, and then you cannot uh, switch, even though then you apply the magnetic uh, uh, spin fork. Always you need bias field, and then which tilt a little bit, that breaks the symmetry, so that then you can switch the magnetization in this way. So that's what you do. But in this novel magnetic spin hole effect, already spin accumulation vector or spin density vector is out of plane and slightly tilted. That's why the which can effectively switch the magnetization of the ferromagnet, which has a perpendicular anisotropy easily. So that is uh, very interesting. And then we are now trying to do this type of experiment with using this magnetic magnetic three team. So, on, and also I'd like to mention, uh, this type of behavior has been observed in anomaly, in, as was reported in this article, appeared in Nature and Technology. What is happening is, this is a very intuitive hand-waving explanation. In the, even in the ferromagnet, you can just expect the conventional spin hole effect, as you can see here. Spin density accumulated at the surface, and in this case, counterclockwise. If you align magnetization along this charge current direction, you can expect on this accumulated spin also that these both two feel kind of torque. Eventually, then which pulls this spin accumulation vector out of plane so that you can get this out of plane component in this experiment. Now I'd like to just move to uh, this anti-ferromagnetic domain or dynamics. So uh, as I said in the very beginning of my talk, this material uh, has a very, uh, has a kagome lattice and a manganese moment is placed on top of it. And typically that of which shows a frustrated type of structure, but one of which can be classified into the cluster magnetic octopole. This analysis was given by the Professor Suzuki and also co workers in 2017. You can find in this article. The very distinctive thing is this uh, cluster magnetic octopole has a broken uh, time reversal symmetry. That's why which behaves like a macro spin. You apply magnetic field in this way, that this lines this, this way, this octopole moment upwards, but then you reverse the magnetic field, and then you can reverse octopole moment, so that this type of, uh, this octopole moment points downwards now. So they, based on this type of idea, um, you and also Professor Balance um, group in UC Santa Barbara, they did micromagnetic simulation, and they found the domains based on this octopole appears. And also if you look at the boundary, since this is in-plane configuration, you can just expect nail-like the maple. I will come back, but a very important thing that I'd like to stress here is since this is a compensated uh, spin structure, there is a time reversal broken uh, octopole moment so that means that we don't expect so much uh, demagnetizing energy so that nail wall and also both like wall could coexist inside this material so if you now look at this in depth or zero zero one direction if you have this kind of elongated sample we can expect this macro spin like octopole rotates 180 degrees so if which should be the proper like wall. So that's what we are interested in. So questions now, whether the cluster magnet octopole behave like a macro spin, as we expect, or how does look like? And also sadly, and I'd like to know, electric current drive at permanent domain wall or not. So that means that like an octopole type spin transfer torque. Already, reports on magnetization process have been uh, presented, reported 
Uh, but very interestingly, that this Mangli 3 team, which shows very different uh, magnetic response, which was measured by MOOC, and also an Sol effect. An Sol effect, which shows bulk average feature. On the contrary, this MOOC experiment shows surface. Surface switching is more difficult than the inside. So then we can say that the nucleation takes place maybe from inside and propagate outside, and that's what we don't know. And also, an um, interesting study was presented recently, uh, performed by uh, Genibides group. They do, they did use anomalous analysis effect to map out magnetic domain structure. By using this laser, you can just induce heat current across the thickness so that if you have particular domain uh, orientation, you can expect anomalous analysis effect and which voltage can be measured between these two extremities. So that is what they did. Even by changing a power, you can expect, you can write this information into it. So that's what they are doing, that they have demonstrated. So what we did is in collaboration with the Professor Nakatani in University Electrocommunications, and we have, we started with LNG equation like this, and take into account effective field, exchange, and also an isotropy, and also the Jarsinski Maria interaction. All this interaction can be converted to the effective field, and then we minimize this system. Of course, and we use and this kind of exchange interaction, and also the Jarsinski Maria, Maria uh, energy coefficient, and also damping constant, general magnetic factor, and isotropy, and all these passes constants, and time steps, and this one is. Uh, typical value which was obtained experimentally in the past. And we put the boundary condition and left hand side up and the right hand side down. So that's what we've done. So this experiments and now that we are interested in domain wall part. And also I'd like to mention this is a kind of wedge shaped sample because as I said um, Rocker wall and also an A wall, which has the equal, more or less a similar energy scale. Therefore, in order to just make Rocker wall more stable, we just put this, this slope wedge shape so that then we can have a straight uh, Rocker wall type structure. This calculation all exactly showed as we expected this kind of one, this is zero, and this is two pi. Okay, and then um, very interestingly, and this has a hexagon, six volt symmetry, so that we have 60 degree domain walls. It's a macro cluster octopole domain wall, and which sandwiches all different anthropomorphic domains, which is a cluster domain, cluster octopole domain. And if you plot the angular depends, and which just shows this kind of stepwise change. And also then we did this uh, dynamics experiment, but we did in a pulse current induced, eventually then we can induce the main wall, and then we send another pulse to drive the main wall in this way. And then the second anomalous hole bar, which detect magnetic state, possibly, and as I said, uh, we could have uh, this kind of wall type structure in this wire. So that's what we did, and then by varying the duration, pulse duration, and also um, time, uh, the current density. So then when we increase the current density up to 60.7, 10 to the 9 ampere per meter squared, and we start to see the very quick motion, which is propagating from this side to here, and then completely sweep out, and then this part is completely switched. In this way, then we can analyze the velocity of the domain wall by simply defining as L is a separation between the two uh, hole bars and the dam uh, divided by the duration. So that then we can plot the velocity as a function of current density in this way. But bad news is we didn't see so much current polarity dependence. So which goes always up. 
And also then, as I said, this sample has a kind of wedge shape. So that's why then if it's also dry, the domain works. So then, then we just uh, fit this part and then with this creep equation. And then uh, this difference between uh, this total velocity and also polarization dependence can be determined as the difference between the two. And also then we analyze this uh, uh, difference by using conventional spin transfer torque model. And then we set this beta over alpha. This is a kind of coefficient, a damping constant, and also momentum uh, dissipation. So that you know, we just varied in three cases, zero, one, and a two. And then our the, uh, result then is setting in between. But it's not that far. Sorry? OK, so then you know, we did um, this fitting, you know, which gave us you know, 50 meter per second at the current density of 2 times 10 to the 12 ampere per meter squared. Then this one is a typical current density which is used for this type of experiment in metallic systems. And also, the, I'd like to just say a few words, and in the very end, we started to use this manganese three germanium recently, and then measured the domain structure. And actually, this is a kind of electrode on which we measured an on solid effect top and the bottom, and it's, a, it's a really ugly. And this is just simply because this is a silver paste. But the very interesting thing is, we can clearly see the domain or nucleation and propagation stuff. See, as you can see here, you see this kind of domain is nucleated and a propagate and a which combine each other. So this type of behavior is observed. Now we are trying to make the sample much smaller and then try to combine single domain wall or much simpler structure and then study on what is happening. So very important, I would like to mention, and for example, if we get a snapshot like this, you see, we can see this, and also this, this is a direction, so that's why the Kagome plane is like this. So this is like a domain, proper like domain wall. And here, this one is more like a nail time domain wall. As I said in the beginning, energy scale for both is a very similar. So that's why the which can coexist, unlike ferromagnet. So then, uh, to be conclude my to conclude my talk, we have studied multiple structure and also electric structure, which shows a very peculiar response, such as an onus hole effect and also magnetic spin hole effect. And by combining two, uh, we can study to topological and ferromagnet. Possibly, we can just go to the topological spintronics by using magnetic spin hole effect, based spin orbit torque. So we like to study more on the functional, functional antiferromagnets. Possibly that which can be applied somehow in volatile memory also. Okay, thank you very much for your attention.